Hello and welcome to Tech Open Air Berlin 2016. I'm Barry Smith from the Centre for the Study of the Senses at the University of London and I'm joined today by two chef researchers, entrepreneurs who've gone well beyond their fields. They are Charles Michel, who is a member of the Crossmodal Lab at Oxford University and is the chef researcher in residence, and Daniel Ospina, who is the founder of Conductal, an organizational design consultancy. So I'm going to start with you, Charles, and I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the cross-modalism movement, which you are both involved in. But first, perhaps you can tell us, how did you come to be involved in Tech Open Air 2016? Sure. Um, so I guess I'm interested in, in, in applying uh, art and science to food design in general and looking f beyond food design on sensory design. Um, and there are a lot of insights from cross-model research, so trying to understand uh, how the senses interact and integrate in our, in our, in our perceptions to, um, to define what we choose to consume and to define what we like. Tell us um, a little more about cross-modal interaction. What does that mean? Yeah, so it's about, so basically no sensory, um, no perception works with uh, uh, based on the information coming from one sense. All the senses uh, kind of come into play. So if you're designing something visual, you have to think about the implicit messages that you might be sending in textures in, and, um, and even the emotions that can certain colors can convey, um, but also um, how sounds can affect uh, how you attend to the flavor of something, uh, be it the smell or the texture or, or, or the taste. Uh, and basically, this knowledge as, that's available in, in scientific literature uh, is often underused in design in general. And there's a lot of opportunity for innovation in the first place, but also to create more pleasurable and more meaningful experiences. Something that is essential nowadays where uh, kind of our species is facing important challenges and, and, uh, and, th and there's a way to tackle, to address uh, those important issues by creating more effective design. Um, for markets, for products and services. So let's break that down a little. So, so we know that the senses are interacting, we know that they're not operating in isolation. And as a practitioner, someone who designs not just uh, wonderful performances and food, but, but also designs art uh, experiences, uh, who do you call upon? Who do you also work with to try mm. to deliver those multi-sensory experiences? Mm. Well, that's yeah, it's precisely the point is that there's there are different um, disciplines that specialize in finding beauty and meaning and a way to convey a certain message through a specialization um, in sound or vision or, fla or flavor that is a very complex contrast but uh, trying to get the right smells, the right aromatic uh, compounds you can, you can say that a farmer uh, that knows how to, do, to make perfect tomatoes and to pick them up at the right moment is designing uh, an ama a multisensory experience and he's creating the volatile um, aromatic compounds in that fruit. Um, so I guess uh, the idea is to bring all these people together that are, that are specialized in a particular uh, technique, let's say, or sensory design, to bring them all together. And just like the senses interact with each other, uh, disciplines must interact with each other. And that's actually something very nice about this conference, where it's, uh, um, it's really about multidisciplinarity. Um, in a way, this is cross-modalism, and cross-modalism is something that human beings have been doing for, for forever, uh, because reality is multisensory by nature, and because uh, one of the bases of human society is collaboration. And so, right now, we have new techniques and new inspiration in art and science to try to make uh, better uh, human experiences, experiences for people. Yeah. So, so we we can see how this works in uh, dining experiences, and maybe even extensions of that into the art of eating and the art of uh, engaging with food. But, but Daniel, I want to ask you a little bit about the cross-modalism movement, which you've been helping along with Charles to promote and support. It goes way beyond just dining. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with cross-modalism? Absolutely. When we started cross-modalism, we started by, by exploring how the senses could interact together. And what we quickly realized is that the crowd we had around us was extraordinary, but was extraordinarily eclectic. There were many different personalities and many different specialties sitting around the same table, using the senses as a language in common 
to transmit ideas to one another. So we took that further and what we tried to do is create spaces for interaction. Spaces where the collaborations, they don't become ephemeral and superficial, which is unfortunately very common, but creating places and really a sense of community where we can meet and have dialogues over extended periods of time. So how did these meetings take place? So the, the main program that we have is a, is a monthly gathering and I like to think about them as a human collider. It's a space where you go and you don't know quite to expect. There was a time where knowledge was something physical. You could go to a library and the books were there in the shelves. That's not the case anymore. Now there is an abundance of information. Accessing information is really easy, but you can only do so if you, need, if you know what to search for. Unless you know the theme, unless you know the name of a topic, is non-existent, it's not available to you. So we try to create a sort of randomness into the curation of these events, where different things will come and hit you, different specialties, different experts will come and explore ideas and so try. So what are some of the things that you've, you've had at these gatherings? We have uh, a wide breadth of presentations. At some point we can have a, an artist, uh, for example, a, a perfumer was recently doing a performance with a synesthete painter and at the same time we had three uh, Berlin-based music composers do a soundtrack that was going to influence what she was painting live. Mm. On some other occasions we had a machine learning special specialist demonstrating an algorithm with which you could program musical instruments to take either graphic inputs or movement capturing devices and immediately translate that to the sounds you wanted to play and create a sort of 3D movement graphic interface for expressing music. So is this also a place where people can test out new designs and can bring ideas in prototype to gatherings? The, the richness of the space comes in, in it being a, a safe place, a place where it's not designed to expose a finished idea because there isn't such a thing. You come there with the intention of playing and experimenting and we do as much as we can to break the barriers in between the presenters and the audience because everyone in that room has something to contribute and it's not necessarily the person who's giving the talk who's going to have the best reply to a question. So we always promote interaction among the whole group and getting to know one another and debating the ideas, not only for the person presenting to gather feedback, which is an important part, but as well for those attending to develop their own ideas based from those principles. So when you're uh, encouraging people to interact and to work together and maybe even reaching out beyond the arts and, and beyond just design, how can you involve the rest of society? How can you make sure that this isn't just a, a small group of designers and, and clever people working together? How can it reach the wider society <coughs> the cross-modalism movement? Yeah, so the, historically there's been many movements, artistic movements, that have started by experimenting um, in, in, in very unconventional ways with different media. And what brings them together is a philosophy. And this philosophy uh, pushes for a certain style. And that certain style, at some point, uh, dribbles down into, into creating products that can be mass consumed. Mm. Um, so there's, there's a way there to buy design. So we're talking about design, really. Uh, the inspiration or the soul of, of a certain form of design that nowadays we feel needs to, to be more meaningful. And that's something I think is going to change in the next decade or so. Um, society is going to look more at, at, uh, at more meaningful products and more meaningful interactions. So uh, there's of course this, this philosophy and this idea where it's completely open to everyone to go and gather this information. We want just to put the information there so people can access it um, and welcome as many people as possible. Of course, there's also you know, logistical issues about making these gatherings happening and we want to, to, to get more people, but we need their space as well. Um, and uh, we're trying to find a way with different uh, groups of thinkers uh, in London, but also talking to people here in Berlin and in New York now, uh, to, to get this idea going and, uh, and, and moving it, pushing it forward. Um, and I guess uh, it's, it's all about facing some of these issues uh, that, that, in a way, we're, we've been disconnected of, uh, of the environment, of nature, and that disconnection comes through um, in cities, this, this lack of stimulation, almost a deprivation 
uh, in, in, in very important senses, some of the senses that, that induce into the more uh, emotional uh, responses that are very important. So this is, this is very good and I can see that you're uh, bringing together people internationally and bringing together a lot of disciplines, uh, skills and expertise. Last question to both of you, short if we can. What do you expect to be the new advances or the, the new developments in, in your industry and in this field in the future 10 years, say? Daniel. I, I expect to see uh, a lot more interaction in, in between four fields apart. The, the outcomes of that will vary and are hardly unpredictable, but I think the methods of working is going to be one of the biggest revolutions mm. and already is one of the biggest revolutions of our time. It's not so much what we are trying to create, but how we are making it and for which purpose. Good. That, Lovely. Mm. Trial. I think it's almost, um, it's going to sound weird, but between politics and spirituality, there is something lacking and there's a whole generation wanting to think globally. Uh, like we understand that you know, uh, borders are imaginary and they are very powerful in, in dividing people. And nowadays we're, the, 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 the changes are, and the changes and the challenges are global. So there's this generation kind of wanting to go there to find, and I guess it's, it's happening, I'm sure someone else is having the same conversation somewhere else in the world, and it's about getting together and, and pushing uh, with the same philosophy. And it's possible now because of technology and yeah. because of people's access to technology. So if people want to find out more about you, where do they go? We, we have a, a Facebook group where you can search for us on the Crossmodelism and as well on our crossmodelism.com website. Great, so please do check out crossmodelism.co website. And from Tech Open Air Berlin, I want to say thank you for joining us today to talk about crossmodelism. Enjoy the rest of the festival.